Hello, thank you for joining us here for another online service here at House of Power Outreach. I'm Pastor Torres, excited to have you with us today. And we are blessed, Pastor Rita and I are just so thankful uh, to be able to be a part of coming into your household and delivering the word. We're going to pray and we're going to get right into the word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, that, that you just speak right through us, Lord God, and to us. I thank you, Lord God, that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, touching on the title is different today about what is up with us. You know, and it's spiritual victory over mental anxiety. And so when I talk about what is up with us, it's almost not like a question of like, what's wrong with us? But really, what, what are we looking to? Right. The scripture said, look up into the heavens, look up into the hills. I know where my help comes from. So what is up with us is what's going to be what's going to be on our mind the long, the strongest. Right. And and so again, and so what is up with you? What do you think about before we get into the scriptures and all these things? What is up with you when you wake up? What is the first thing up on your mind? What is the first thing up on your heart? What is the first thing up in your, in, you know, just everything that you do? What is up with us? And as believers, what should be up with us is the word of God. Yeah, and that's the thing we want to put up first. And so in, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 through 4, it says, If ye be been risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So even in just that verse alone, our life is hid in Christ. Our life is Christ. And so uh, a lot of times we tend to take ownership, blame, or condemnation, usually mostly about where our life is headed. Well, but no, my life is in Christ and, and Christ has taken me where we need to, where I need to go and, and, and trust God for he's carrying you, not where you kind of led you to. God is taking you there. So just submit to God. That That is our honest truth. That's what's the thing that needs to be up with us is, am I submitting to God or am I submitting to my surroundings? And the, 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 the quote that I, I use a lot is, if you have no inner life, you're slave unto your surroundings. So if you're not trusting what the spirit of God is saying to you and through you, you are enslaved to the surroundings around you. I mean, your attitude, your emotions. So then this is a really... Uh, a, a, a strain on our mental health and, and our mental a part of us because then we're shrinking to the surroundings instead of growing from the greater one that's within us that first John 4 forces greater is he that's within us than he is within the world. However, if you're around and surroundings is the biggest influence, you have to shrink to what your surroundings can stand. And, and that will lead to just a, a mental oppression all around. So you, so you got to stop and go, wait a minute. There's a greater one that's inside of me. I'm hidden in Christ. I'm hidden in Jesus. I know what the Bible says about me. So I'm not going to shrink from that to accommodate the surroundings. No, I'm going to grow in that. I'm going to be up to that. That's, that's what's going to be up with me is the greater one that's within me. And that's the first thing that I'm going to have on my heart. Again, we, we obviously know that, that what the surroundings ultimately does, if, if I'm living according to my surroundings, if, if I'm, if I'm uh, measuring my blessings based on that, and, and I would say this, if that's what you're measuring your, your blessing on, or if anyone's measuring you by what's happening around you, they need to get a different measuring stick because the stick that God uses is greater than what's around you. And there's too many verses in the Bible that, that states so and proves so. So you, you stop and you go with the, with the point of here's what's up with me. I believe in the word of God. No man is greater than what God's word says. And so that's what's up with us. And that's what's up with, with us as believers. So high affections restores our high expectations. And a man with hope is strengthened in his mental capacity to deal with the workings of everyday life. So it's it's a man of hope. It's a it's a man of joy. It's a man of peace. It's a man of, of, of greatness because now, now my affections are set so my expectations can grow. When I have low affections, my expectations dwindle as well. Again, leading to forms of depression, leading to form of mental anxiety and all, all of these things that, that our world is facing today. It's because their expectations has a lid on it because their affections 
have been submitted under a lid. And so one of the greatest things, the greatest love of all, we know it's God, right? We, he, he love, we love him because he first loves us. It's that the greatness of God's love. So when my affections are aligned with that greatness of love, man, my, my expectations are, are, are unlimited, the potential of what we can do. And so there is where we, we, we put ourselves into is where we're setting our affection, what, what, what I put my heart into, what I put my soul into into. And, and so it's got to be the kingdom, right? Because God is the only one that can save the soul. He is the only one. And so we got to re restore our affection. So if you're down, if you're hurting, if you're upset, if you're, you know, feeling like, man, there's nowhere for me to go. I just feel basically depressed. S reset your affections on things above, right? James 1 17 says every good and perfect gift comes from above. So you reset your affections. So I believe the mental health becomes ill when we can only view our life from the ground level. And I 100% believe that, that you only view it from the ground level. Now, even with that being said, the Bible says when you're, when you're, wherever you place your foot, you call it God's land. So my affections have to be about God. So even at the ground level, if I'm looking that God brought me here and God's going to take me through this, if God brought me to it, he's going to take me through this, that my affections are on him. Even at ground level, I can see better. But if I'm only staring at what's beneath me, if I'm only staring at what I can walk on and what I can feel on, I'll never have the Peter experience of bid me come and he walked out on the water for the little bit of time that he did. We're missing out on opportunities to walk by faith and, and because we're limited by our sight. Um, prayer is, is say, prayer. It says, they thy will be done. The Lord's prayer says, thy will be done. Uh, on earth as it is in heaven, meaning the ground situation must be looked at through the eyes of heaven. Exactly what I was just saying. You know, you're placing your feet, you're in the situation, your kids are going through things, you meant to have your kids, you meant to have your family, you meant to have your job, and because things are, are going in a different way or not going the way you feel like it should be planned, never set your affections. And what I mean by that, you can become emotional if your affections are set on the wrong thing. You'll be emotional toward the wrong thing, and it'll it can break you instead of having your affections on God and having your emotions tied with the spirit of God. And so he grows us from there. So no matter what we are facing, when we know what is up with us as believers, the enemy doesn't stand a chance at overtaking us. And that's that's the real great thing, right? The enemy knows he can't steal you from heaven. He can't steal you from God. He can't steal you from salvation. But his goal is to overtake us by us becoming overwhelmed to the point that we don't pray, we don't believe, we don't stand, we don't agree because we're too busy looking down. Be up with what God has got your body, what God has called you to be up in. And so it is part of our truth. Foundational Christian living is based on biblical truth in that we know Jesus was raised from the dead and the same spirit dwells in our mortal body. So wherever you are right now, the three days and three nights that the time that Jesus spent in a grave wasn't the last place. It wasn't, didn't have the final say. There was a resurrection. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. There is a get up in you. There's a get up in me. There's a there's an overcoming. There's a victorious part of us that overcomes that that this mentality of waking up and, and feeling like I failed again. I failed another day. No, God says your eyes are open. Look unto the hills where your help comes from. You have you you made it through the night. Rejoice. Have a victory party. Celebrate that you've made it through that point. Now move forward. So our identity is in Christ and not the cloud of disappointment running through our minds. We are raised with Christ. After his resurrection, Jesus lived in supernatural power with the ability to do impossible things. Live in the supernatural. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You are born again. Live in the supernatural, live beyond the mental capacity to only believe and do what I've observed instead of believe in doing what God has spoken. So should we, so should we live in this per this supernatural with the power and the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus looked forward to heaven knowing he would soon enough ascend there. So should we, so should we look toward heaven recognizing that our citizenship is in heaven, knowing where we are from and where we are going will help us overcome the difficult chapters we face in this world. The best Christian living 
comes from minds that are fixed on heaven. Fixed on heaven. Set on heaven. That's the greatest mind here. The Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador, when he was in, whenever he's an American ambassador, no matter what country they're in, don't live off the resources of the country they're in. They live off the resources of the country that they are from. So they can be in a third world country that's very poor, but they're rich because of the resources they're living from is from their country. Well, we are from heaven. We live from the resources of heaven. Though we are here, we're not bound to the resources of this earth. We live from, and that means financially, mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, that's our resources is from heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is the place. There is the place that we are to have our resources made from. And so we come from that part of it. And so we, we focus on that. So we, we fix our minds on heaven. They realize that their lives are now hidden with Christ and God. And since Jesus is enthroned in heaven, their thoughts and their hearts, and I should say our thoughts and our hearts are connected to heaven. Also, the believer who is to seek the things above, the word seek means aspirations have some aspiration it and it's what a, a desire and passion i know people kind of make fun of new year's resolutions like they don't make them anymore because they say all i do is lie to myself well quit lying to yourself have some aspiration when, when you don't seek when the, the word seek the things above marks aspiration when you don't have any aspiration which means you've closed your eyes to anything greater than what you can what you can do instead of looking to what god has already done and what god will do through you and so we, we go to those parts of what we need to do. In order to seek these things, the mind must be set on them. I can't seek what I don't set on. And if I don't set on, I will never seek them. Well, I just can't see anything God's doing because you ain't set on what God is doing. You ain't set on what the word has said. And when you get set on what the word is God, the word has said, you'll seek. The Bible says in, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him diligently seek because I've set on the word that has been spoken. So I diligently seek him there. there, And he, he rewards the diligently seeking him. Love heavenly things, study them. Let your heart be entirely engrossed by them. Now that you are converted to God, act in reference to heavenly things as you did formerly to the reference of those of the earth. The excitement you used to give to the earth, the excitement you used to give to the world. Act that way toward heavenly things. Give them that. Give them those things. Give them those, those, those uh, parts of you, that joy, that peace, that overwhelming excitement. Give yourself to God in that exact same manner. Uh, earthly things are not all evil. But some of them are, 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 some of them are, even things harmless in themselves become harmful, permitted to take, to take the place that should be reserved for the things above. Jesus is our life. So it could be something small. Not, and again, I say one of the most dangerous words in the Christian uh, language is, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, and which is more dangerous thing because then you're not walking by faith, you're walking by sight. And then if your eyes are what you're basing your seeing on, you will see more to the terms of what benefits your flesh than what God has called you to benefit your spirit. That's why we seek things are above. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 through 13, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we, we, man, we, like, we can put this verse up and say 2022, 2023. Well, put the year on it. Put a year, put a name on it. And we say, this is exactly what's happening. We see people's love waxing cold, just cold-hearted killers, cold-hearted uh, uh, manipulators, cold-hearted abusers that to the point of just being cold, cold-hearted children who are speaking to their parents in, in such a mean way. We got older adults who won't speak to their parents. It's, it's cold-hearted. Their, their love has waxed cold. And, and it is such a, a deadly thing that is kind of overshadowed and taken a place of family and blood relative. It, it doesn't matter. When, when, when there's not a sight on the things of God, there's a set to the pain and the destruction of this world. 
And so the Bible clearly says when you speak the truth, you're going to be offended. You're going to be, you're going to, people are going to say you're offending them. They're going to say you hate them. They're, well, they're going to hate you because they hate Christ. They hate the word. We're living it. We're right here in it. And as I said on the, on the last message that this, I would, 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 um, would rather be divided in truth than be in agreement and error. In other words, I would rather speak the truth and people separate from me than go along with them and believe their error with them. You know, and as Christians, we have to speak the truth. It doesn't matter if it's a relative. It doesn't matter if, if you think it's hurting their feelings. Uh, who would we rather be at, at, at a, have a problem with, man or God? And, you know, we have to be willing to speak up. And that when, when we do that, when we say, well, I just don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to, and I'm not asking you to offend anybody, but I am telling you, you got to stand up for the truth. Because again, the minute you don't, you're not seeking things that are above. You're seeking their approval instead of being approved with God. Many people have said, I'd rather be right with God than right with man. And, and I'd rather have to answer to God properly, you know, than have to, answer then answer to man right I, I don't want to approve man and then have to answer to God for what I've approved here on earth no I, I'm gonna go like I'd rather be divided from them if that's that that's what they want to believe I'm gonna believe the truth uh, when all of these things come against anyone their mental health will have a hard time regulating a healthy mindset so when people don't like us we, if everybody wants to be like I don't care how the coldest hardest person say I don't care if nobody likes me. we all do. We all do. We want it. Now, again, now when it happens, because people are not, everybody's going to like you. We've understand it. We've lived long enough to know that. Now, what do we do with that? What do we do when, when, when we're not liked, when we're not appreciated, when we're not wanted? And now, again, if we if we're got yeah, everything set and our, we're seeking only that approval, we're going to have a letdown, and which is ultimately going to lead to a meltdown. And so what God is saying here is seek the things above. Don't seek them. They're, they're destined to not like you. That's what they do. So you have to be destined to know who loves you and who cares about them. And that's God who sent Jesus to die for you, who will never leave you or forsake you. Uh, God gives us, gives a believer direction on how they are already risen above by enduring through who and what they know about God. Your endurance to still be here on this earth. I got some great friends who've overcome it's some great depressions and all of them were suicidal and man, and that endurance, you, you can see it just, it just lifts them. It just, you can just see it just resets them and it just restores them and, and tells them like, you can go on. There's more in you. There's more in you. There's more in you. And persistence grows in them. And you can see that when the devil tried to kill them and take them out, that it didn't happen. They just got a little bit stronger and got another step and took another step. So it is pop. They that endure to the end shall be Saved. So even the one day that you make it, that's another step of getting stronger. One day that you didn't do anything mentally or set yourself back, that's another day of being stronger. The endurance grip is strengthened when our mind is set up for thinking higher than the circumstances. And that strengthens the, that strengthens the ability to endure. It empowers you. It's one thing to say, I'm strong enough. Empower says, I know within me, I'm going to do the thing I'm strong enough to do. And you move forward. Through Jesus, we are set up to get up from anything that comes against us. God raising, raising us will outlast the enemy chasing us. So the enemy, you may feel like he's after you. Everything's going wrong. Why does something keep happening wrong in my family? Things going on. But the God who raised you, He's raising you up and he's constantly just raising you up from everything that comes your way. So we were raised with Christ, cause constantly raising us up through this world so that the enemy cannot ever come up, to, uh, overwhelm us by chasing us. Don't let the chase stop you. Keep moving. He can't catch you as long as you keep moving toward the things of God. In Acts chapter four, verse 18 through 20, it says, then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than God. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. So even though like the, the Peter, the, the Peter and John just uh, sit there and told them, like, you judge, you, you sit here and say, listen to what you're telling me. And then ask yourself, should they be listening to me or should they be listening to God? Like, I mean, that's, man, that's savage right there. That's savage. 
Like, yeah, you keep talking and now ask yourself, should we listen to you or should we be listening to God? Just, I mean, you talk about tables turn. That is such a savage move and statement of, of, about the, the spirit of God and moving upon people uh, and, and letting them know, who should I be listening to? Who should I be listening to? You or God? Well, they said we're going to listen to God. It means that the options are off the table. I hear the enemy knows, hear the enemy knows that if he can get them to believe the threats are greater than their walk with God, it will rob them of a peaceful mind. And I recently heard something said, people always talk about is you need to fall in love. And the Bible says to walk in love. Right, because the greatest thing that you're gonna ever do is be able to walk in love. You can fall in anything that almost sounds accidental. Walk is intentional. I walk in love. I walk by faith. I I walk in the things of God. I walk in the Spirit of God. It's intentional. It's my temp intentions to, to believe and trust God and walk in God and all that I say and do. Uh, and so that is my that is where my peaceful mind resides. If circumstances are allowed to loot our mind, we will have a decline in our mental health. Health. And again, I want to encourage those who are fighting the mental health battle, fighting the depression, fighting the being overwhelmed and fighting the feeling useless and, and not worth anything. Listen, let me tell you, seek, look up, pick your head up, seek, set your affections. Your affections are set too low and they're getting, not only are they, your affections low, but they're being infected by the things of this world. Casting down evil imagination raises our mind to believe in God's justification. So you got to cast down every evil imagination that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. What does God know about your life? What does what did God know all along about you? Cast down evil imagination so that can come up oh, more than what's coming against you. Speak and think the truth in God's word because it is better to be divided by truth, as I said, than united with the world in error. A set affection on things above will always opt to speaking God's word over anything else. It, When you set your affection, it gets rid of the options. It takes the options out of course. So should I love God? Should I obey God? No, no. My affections are set here. The, I'm opting out of any disobedience. And I believe that God is going to come through for you in a major way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I speak to the hearts and minds of the body of Christ. I thank you for each and every person listening to the sound of my voice. I thank you for immediate, suddenly healing in their mind, suddenly healing in their heart, their mental capacity to be every bit whole by the power and authority of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come in, restore bring forth restoration and peace in our mind. Father, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I believe if you agreed and prayed their prayer with me that God is moving on your behalf right now. We're blessed to have you. Please let us know how you're doing. We look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.